Well, welcome to another weekly wellness segment with Trinity Health. We have Dr. Dr. Kevin Foley with us today, um, talking about memory loss as we age. Um, let, let's discuss this. You know, as we get older, right? I feel like you know you feel scatterbrained a little bit. You forget people's names. You forget where your keys are. Is this something that's normal? Is this a normal part of aging, or is this something that we need to be concerned about? It can be. Okay. Uh, everybody has some memory loss, of course, and. It's known that memory loss is really not a part of normal aging. So if somebody notices something, it may or may not represent an underlying problem. But progressive changes in memory, and particularly those that impact one's ability to do for themselves, to fulfill their obligations and responsibilities, that may be a problem and needs to be evaluated. Is this something typically a person notices with themselves, or is this something that a loved one or a friend or someone notices with them? Uh, you know, it's probably about evenly balanced. Okay. I see just as many patients who have noticed changes themselves, but more often than not, it's someone else who has noticed the change. I don't think that we have very good internal reading abilities of our memory from day to day, but others certainly can see those changes Absolutely. better. Okay, so, so let's talk about, you know, Alzheimer's versus dementia. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? I get that question all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it needs to be clarified because they do mean different things. Dementia is an outcome, not a cause. Okay. And the term dementia means that for some reason or reasons, a person's memory has declined to a point where they really cannot meet all of their personal obligations and responsibilities, whatever they may be. Not everyone does the same thing. For instance, some people do finances, some don't. Some cook meals, some don't. But there has to be some marker of function as it relates to memory. And as memory progresses and leads to what we call functional dependency, that would support a diagnosis of dementia. There are many causes of dementia, however. Alzheimer's is the leading cause of dementia in the world for adults over the age of 65, but it can also result from Parkinson's disease or strokes and other neurodegenerative disorders as well. Okay, perfect. So, you know, obviously people notice, you know, I'm forgetting things, I'm not functioning. Are there any other really warning signs when people need to come in and see a specialist, get help? Yeah, you know, and honestly, determining a person's functioning abilities can be very, very challenging because most things that we do really don't require a lot of thought or planning, making a meal, uh, answering the telephone, but changes in one's ability to do more complex tasks such as managing finances or take medications correctly, and especially if somebody's taking a lot of medications, that could be a tip-off. From a distance, though, more often than not, what is noticed is that somebody really struggles to remember things that have just happened, conversations and events, and also sometimes their speech may become uncharacteristically repetitive. Yeah. What kind of treatments are available? It really depends. There are treatable causes of memory loss. Okay. In fact, there are very common causes of memory loss that can be treated that I always screen for in my practice. And if those are present, then we absolutely treat them and see if there's any improvement. But for those who don't have a treatable cause of memory loss, there still may be some options. Okay. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, there are medications that are FDA approved that can be used to help slow down the rate of further progression of symptoms. Right, and that's for a very specific set of people. Exactly, right. Those pills don't work for everyone. They only work, or intravenous medications as well, they only work for people who are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Okay, perfect. And, and is there anything people can do proactively? Are there lifestyle modifications mm -hmm. someone can make as they're younger to maybe ensure that, you know, they prolong their, right. their brain health. Right, yeah, there are. The messaging, messaging has actually changed. For many, many years, we used to tell people to keep their minds active and to do brain exercises and brain games and change their diet and exercise. We still recommend that to some degree, but there's new research that shows that there's other strategies that can be done that may be more effective. One is that if a person has hearing loss, they really need to get that checked out. And if they're candidates for hearing aids, they need to get hearing aids. Yeah. There is brand new evidence that suggests that persistent hearing impairment can actually increase the risk of dementia over time. That's a very simple strategy. Yeah. Another is that sleep apnea, and sometimes the public misunderstands what that is. Sleep apnea really has nothing to do with the quality of your sleep. It has to do with how you're breathing mm -hmm. while you're asleep. Right. And if somebody does have sleep apnea and is not treated, there's a subset of individuals who, because of that, will have an increased risk of dementia. So that needs to be checked out as well. Interesting. And then the third option <clears throat> for prevention is to make sure that medication reviews are done periodically with the primary care physician because there is a type of medication that has a certain side effect 
It's called an anticholinergic side effect. It has to do with its action on certain brain neurotransmitters. And if certain drugs that have high levels of anticholinergic side effects are taken too long, those medications can also increase the risk of dementia. Okay. So brand new messaging. If you still want to do brain games, that's fine. <laughs> doesn't hurt? <laughs> doesn't hurt at all. Doesn't okay. hurt in staying well and healthy and making sure also that risk factors for heart disease are addressed. There is a relationship between having those risk factors and increased risk of dementia. So if you have high blood pressure, get it down. If you have high cholesterol, get it down. If you smoke, stop. If you're a diabetic, make sure that your diabetes is optimally controlled. Okay. So these are conversations you need to have with your primary care physician? Most of them, yes. Okay. Uh, they don't need to see me. I'm always happy to see anyone if they have questions because not all primary care physicians have all the answers. And I know sometimes there has to be clarity okay. in a patient encounter so that they know exactly what to do. Okay. So can someone reach out to you and make an appointment? Yeah. No, absolutely. We are open for business. We take referrals from all primary care physicians in the area and beyond. Very happy to sit down and talk about whatever the concerns are that patients or their families might have. Wonderful. Dr. Foley, appreciate your time. You bet. You want more information on memory disorders and Alzheimer's? You can just head to trinityhealthmichigan.org slash memory or give them a call. That phone number right there on your screen, 616-685-5050.